April 20th, 2020. Monday of the second week of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported what the chief priests and elders had told them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Sovereign Lord, maker of heaven and earth, and the sea and all that is in them, you said by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, your servant, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples entertain folly? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the princes gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Indeed, they gathered in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do what your hand and your will had long ago planned to take place. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. As they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Why do the nations rage and the peoples utter folly? The kings of the earth rise up, and the princes conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their fetters and cast their bonds from us. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. He who is throned in heaven laughs. The Lord derides them. Then in anger he speaks to them. He terrifies them in his wrath. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man once grown old be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. This is Catholic Daily Reflections for Monday of the second week of Easter. Today's reflection is entitled, Born Again. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Are you born again? This is a common question among many of the evangelical Christians. But it's a question that we should ask ourselves also. So are you. And what does that exactly mean? Hopefully each one of us answers that question with a wholehearted yes. Scripture is clear that we must receive a new birth in Christ. The old self must die and the new self must be reborn. 
This is what it means to become a Christian. We take on new life in Christ. Being born again happens by water and the Holy Spirit. It happens in baptism. When we are baptized, we enter into the waters and die with Christ. As we rise from the waters, we are reborn in Him. This means that baptism does something truly amazing in us. It means that as a result of our baptism, we are adopted into the very life of the Most Holy Trinity. Baptism for most of us happened when we were infants. It's one of those things we do not think about very often, but we should. Baptism is a sacrament that has an ongoing and eternal effect in our lives. It implants an indelible character upon our souls. This character is a constant source of grace in our lives. It's like a well of grace that never goes dry. From this well, we are constantly nourished and renewed to live out the dignity we are called to live. We are given from this well the grace we need to live as sons and daughters of our Father in Heaven. Reflect today upon your own baptism. Easter is a time more than any when we are called to renew this sacrament. Holy water is a good way to do just that. Perhaps the next time you are at church, it would be good to consciously remind yourself of your baptism and the dignity and grace you have been given through this sacrament by making a sign of the cross on your forehead with holy water. Baptism has made you into a new creation. Seek to both understand and live that new life you have been given during this Easter season. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I renew today my baptism. I forever renounce sin and profess my faith in Christ Jesus, your Son. Give me the grace I need to live out the dignity to which I have been called. Jesus, I trust in you.